We want to get you now this, one of the biggest investors in the world, Saudi Arabia's finance minister is with me right now, Mohammed al Jadan, Saudi Arabia's crown prince, of course, Mohammed bin Salman, is here in New York City this week, meeting with business leaders in an effort to attract foreign investment into his country. The visit follows stops in Washington, D.C., in Boston, and before he heads to the West Coast to meet with technology and entertainment leaders at the end of the week. Sir, good to have you on the program. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. You are doing really an extraordinary liberalization of the Saudi Arabian economy right now. Characterize where you are and what you're trying to do. I think where we are, we are at a stage where we moved uh, from planning uh, over the past two years to execution. So there is significant positive momentum now uh, where the economy is going. We managed uh, over the last two years to reduce our budget deficit by 40%. Uh, we have uh, a potential growth of near 2% uh, this year. Nano oil uh, growth will be about 3%. Uh, there is uh, wide reform taking place in Saudi Arabia, fiscal, economy, social, legal, ref uh, regulatory reform. So it's a very wide spectrum of what we are trying to achieve, and, and there is a lot of momentum now. It's actually quite extraordinary what you're trying to do in terms of liberalizing this economy in an extraordinary way from society to uh, paying for a costly war, investing an, an, an enormous amount of money in businesses, either directly or through the Vision Fund. How will you pay for this? Obviously, we are a very um, well uh, nation. I mean, we have uh, the largest, one of the fourth largest uh, foreign reserves in the world. Uh, we have significant uh, revenues coming from oil and non-oil. We managed to grow our non-oil by 130% over the last four years alone. So there is a lot of wealth in the country that we have not tapped in the past, that we are now trying to tap. So it is diversifying the economy, diversifying our income, trying to put to use uh, the wealth that we have not tapped into uh, for the last uh, 10, 20 years. When, when I was in Riyadh in October, uh, there was a lot of conversation about these new industries that you're trying to develop in Saudi Arabia to try to get foreign money into the country. What do you think are the most promising industries that you think will drive growth? There are currently there are 12 uh, implementing programs that we are uh, initiating in a very wide spectrum in the economy. Uh, key elements of these are industries where currently we are importing almost 90 percent of what we consume. We are trying actually now to manufacture in Saudi Arabia half of that. Uh, so between now and 2030 we aim to manufacture, for example, 50 percent of the uh, armament that we are importing, 50 percent of uh, automobiles and, and transport uh, services that we are currently importing. We are trying to tab into uh, a mining sector that is very limited uh, utilization uh, today and to a significant more. We are trying to uh, work extensively in the entertainment. Uh, we have had very limited entertainment industry. We think it is a very high employment. Uh, it will contribute to the GDP. Uh, we are working extensively on various other sectors in technology, for example, where we are investing inside and outside Saudi Arabia. We have mega projects, as uh, has been announced in last October, the new city, Neom, which is focused on the future technology. So there is a lot uh, that is uh, being done in Saudi Arabia. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the city of Neom, and you're going to have robotics and lots of AI-related industries that you're hoping w will get created for, for the city of Neom. I know that. But, I mean, what you just said is pretty incredible. I mean, you want to start manufacturing things. You've not done this before. So you're talking about creating new industries and manufacturing things, whether it's, you know, apparel or, you know, industry-type things. How do you do that? Is, are you doing training for your people, or are you expecting to take in people, experts in some of these industries, to start manufacturing things that you've never done before? I think it's a combination of both. We have done uh, manufacturing before in certain sectors, in oil and petrochemical. Sure, of course. Oil, uh, yeah. We are leading uh, in the world. Uh, in areas where we have not done before, what we are trying to do is we are training our people, but then we are actually partnering with the right experts, uh, U.S. companies and others, to bring in the know-how and expertise into Saudi Arabia. Let, let me ask you, are you expecting to derive 
lower revenues from oil. Are you want to diversify the economy? Does that mean you're relying on oil revenues less? What we are doing is we are trying to avoid the volatility of the oil price. Mm -hmm. Obviously, we believe oil is here to stay for a long period of time. But we, are, we wanted to make sure that the non-oil revenue bring in to stability into the revenues of the government and diversify our economy, create more jobs, empower the private sector. This is an area where we are really focusing on to make sure that the private sector is the engine of growth in the future. And, and of course, that's very smart, given the level of oil prices. I mean, are the days of $100 a barrel oil over? I will not speculate on oil price. I, uh... but longer term, though, you've got a lot of supply in the market. So I guess the expectation is, is that oil doesn't go back to $100. I think, I think generally, if you listen to the experts, and, and the CEO of uh, Aramco was in, on, on TV uh, last night, uh, the, the uh, prediction is that there isn't enough investment today in oil. And uh, we require significant investment for that supply to be uh, continuing. So mm -hmm. there are potential of suppliers currently running out of their supplies in the next five to ten years. Oh, so you're not betting on this supply story. You think they'll run out of supplies? I, I believe there are current uh, nations and companies who will be running out of their supplies or it is reducing significantly in the next five to ten years. Very interesting that you say that. Okay, 